Hey, sixth grade, how's it going? So we're going to do a little bit of review with fractions today. Um, it's a very difficult concept, so it's always important that we do some review. After that, we're going to just briefly talk about division of fractions, and then we'll maybe play a game. Um, in class, we'll play a Kahoot, but I'll probably just show you a game of how you can learn more about division of fractions. So let's jump right in. So as you know, fractions are a very important aspect of just understanding math. So what I'm going to do is just show you a couple of examples of fractions that we've learned in not only third grade, fourth grade, and fifth grade, but a little bit into uh, this year. As you know, four-fourths can be broken up into different sections. For example, four-fourths equals one whole, as you can see in this example right here. Um, four can also be separated into a fraction. You can put the actual whole number on the top and then put the denominator as a one, right? There's several ways that you can show a number, and this is just one of them. A whole number can also be a fraction, right? So for example, let's actually do a couple of examples with that. Um, if you're a little bit confused of how a whole number can be a fraction or a fraction can be a whole number, uh, let me show you a couple of examples. Um, for example, 4 over 4 is just 1, right? We just have uh, 1, and then any number over itself is always going to equal 1. So that would mean 8 over 8 is equal to 1, and 5 over 5 is equal to 1, and 1 over 1 is equal to 1, and let's see, 3 over 3 is equal to 1, um, and we just we just have a whole bunch of numbers that are over over themselves, right? So that's always equal to 1. We can always relate a whole number with a fraction in that way. Um, but what about these other ones? Uh, for example, um, we have 2 over 1. Well, that would be a whole number, right? 2 over 1 is actually just 2, which means that 5 over 1 is actually 5, and 6 over 1 is just 6, and 4 over 1 is 4. Okay, so we're relating a fraction to a whole number. That's really important that we understand that concept. Okay, uh, the next concept is trying to understand that if we simplify a number, um, we can always take the multiples of the number and, and try to simplify it. And we can always use that fraction or that whole number, for example, a 5 over 5, which is just uh, basically multiplying by itself. Um, to figure out a different problem, okay? In this example, we're simplifying, or in, in this case, it's more um, ex like expanding the problem, right? Four over one times five times five is the same as 20 fifths, uh, which you could simplify to just four over one, one more time, or four, okay? In this example, we have a fraction multiplied by a whole number. Now, just like I explained before, this whole number, 2, can just be changed to a fraction 2 over 1, which we can then just multiply, right? 3 times 2 is 6, and 5 times 1 is 5, which would change to a mixed number, a mixed fraction, okay? Um, which we'll be learning a little bit about a little bit later on, okay? Just reviewing. Say, for example, you are adding or subtracting fractions, and you need to find the common denominator among both of them, or, or between both of them, right? Eight and six are not the same fraction, right? They're not, eighths and sixths are, are completely different. Um, but what we can do is just find the least common denominator. For example, we just do the multiples of six, six, 12, 18, 24, 30, and we can keep going if we want to. And eight would be eight, 16, 24, 32, and find the least common denominator among them, right? That 24, the factor, is, is the least common. So we would then change 8 to 24 and 6 to 24. Well, how do we do that? Um, well, 8 times 3 equals 24, which means that we'd also have to multiply 2 times 3 to equal 6. So 2 eighths is the same as 6 24ths. So how would we do that with the other fraction? Um, 5 6. Well, 6 times 4 equals 24, and that means we need to also do the same thing on the top, the numerator. 5 times 4 equals 20. So we have 6 24ths and 20 24ths. We could add them, we could subtract them, um, 
by dividing or multiplying fractions, we don't need to find the same common denominator. So don't worry about that. If we had a mixed number, we could change that to an improper fraction. For example, 2 and 3 fourths is the same as 11 fourths. You might be asking, well, how'd you figure that out? Well, remember, there's many different ways to do it, many steps. Um, you could take 2 times 4 and then add the numerator. In other words, the whole number times the denominator plus the numerator gives you uh, your, your new numerator, in this case, 11. And then you just keep the same denominator. The, the denominator is unchanged. It doesn't change. Okay. Uh, here's another example. 3 and 3 fourths. How do we change that to an improper fraction? Well, we take, again, the denominator times the whole number, and then we add the numerator. So 3 times 4 is 12, plus 3 is 15. So 15 fourths is the same as 3 and 3 fourths. How about division of fractions, which we're going to be getting into today? Well, if you're dividing by a whole number, for example, um, again, you can change your whole number to a fraction just by putting that number over 1, right? Um, if you're multiplying fractions, um, it's, that's the, the step where you want to get when you're dividing fractions. So we need to know how to multiply fractions before we can even talk about dividing fractions. So let's actually look at this example. Um, when we take 2 thirds times 1 half, that little point in the middle is a multiplication sign, uh, we would just multiply straight across. So 2 times 1 is 2, and 3 times 2 is 6, and 2 sixths later on simplifies to 1 third. Okay? So we're basically just taking 1 half of 2 thirds, which would be 1 third. Okay? You can see that with the drawing on the bottom. Trying to divide fractions is interesting because you need to find the reciprocal of that fraction. So, for example, in this case, we would switch the second fraction and then multiply. Um, that word reciprocal will come in handy a little bit later. Let's talk about uh, this problem. For example, if we wanted to divide 1 half by 1 sixth, we would leave 1 half the same, change the division symbol to a multiplication symbol, and then flip or turn over the 1 sixth to find its reciprocal, or in this case, 6 over 1, and then just multiply like normal. Here's another way to show it. Uh, for example, if we had 3 fourths divided by 2 sevenths, we keep 3 fourths, we change the division symbol to a multiplication symbol, and then we flip it, flip 2 sevenths. Okay, you always flip that second fraction, um, and then we multiply like normal. 3 times 7 is 21, and 4 times 2 is 8, okay, which you could simplify if you really wanted to, since it's an improper fraction. Okay? Here's another example. Uh, pause the video and see if you can understand the steps that you would need to divide these two fractions. All right, hopefully you saw that 1 half divided by 3 fourths is the same as 1 half times the reciprocal, or 4 thirds, and then you multiply across. 4 times 1 is 4, and 2 times 3 is 6. And then we simplify that by dividing both sides by 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2, and 6 divided by 2 is 3. Okay, so let's look at this next example. Try to see if you can fill in the blank uh, with the sentence prompt that's on the screen. If we have 3 fourths divided by 2 thirds, what would we do first? Well, it says first to divide 3 fourths by 2 thirds, we need to. Hopefully you said, keep the first fraction, okay? 3 fourths stays the same, and then what do we do? Well, we multiply by its reciprocal. We switch 2 thirds to thir 3 halves, and then we would multiply, right? 3 times 3 is 9, and 2 times 4 is 8. So 9 eighths would be our improper fraction or our um, regular answer, uh, which would also be 1 and 1 eighth, okay, if we're simplifying that out. Okay, all this is review, boys and girls. It's just important that you, um, you remember it, okay? Here's another example of changing an improper fraction after we divide into a mixed number. For example, 12 tenths is our final answer, which we can change into a mixed number. One would be the 10 tenths, and then what's left over, two tenths, which changes to one fifth. 
Okay, so 1 and 1 fifth is the exact same number as 12 tenths. Okay, let's do one more problem just so we can see um, how to simplify the number within the procedure. Okay, we've, we've done the simplification later on with this problem and with this problem, but we can also simplify within the calculation. For example, 1 fourth times 8 thirds, which is the reciprocal of 3 eighths, would then equal a number which we can simplify. So 8 and 4 both have factors that are uh, common. We can divide both of them by 4. So 8 divided by 4 is 2, and 4 divided by 4 is 1. We would just multiply across, just like normal. 1 times 2 is 2, and 1 times 3 is 3. So our final answer is 2 thirds. Okay? Now you might be asking, Mr. Joseph, why do you switch the second fraction? What's up with that? I don't understand. I don't get it. Well, here's a really, really long explanation from nctm.org, which is the National Council for Teaching Mathematics. Okay, um, They give you a whole long explanation and <laughs> just some differences of what's easy and what's more difficult. And at the way end, they give you this one sentence that says, Students discover that multiplying by the reciprocal is the equivalent of getting the common denominator and dividing the numerators, which in Spanish is cuando se multiplica por el reciprico es el equivalente a obtener el denominador común y dividir los numeradores. Okay, so that's the reason why we find the reciprocal, why we multiply by the reciprocal. Okay, let's do a couple of examples on page 19. All right, uh, 19 has just a few examples. We've actually already done these problems in early, uh, oops, let's delete that. Uh, in early, um, I'm sorry, late, late February, we already did a couple of these problems. So let's do a couple of them again, um, just because it's, it's important to review. I'm gonna erase everything again, sorry. When we take a division problem, we're dividing fractions, we always flip the second fraction. We find the reciprocal. Okay, so we're going to multiply by the reciprocal, which is 8 over 1. All right, so I'm not, now I'm going to multiply 8 over 1 times 1 half. It doesn't matter which order you do this in. 8 times 1 is 8, and 1 times 2 is 2. So 8 divided by 2 is the same as 4, right? So that's going to be our answer for number 1. And it's the same concept. We're just counting to see how many one-eighths are fit that fit into one-half. So you have one, two, three, four one-eighths or four sections of that bar model right there, okay, of the entire whole, okay, in this case it's just a one-half, right? So four of those one-eighths, or in other words, four-eighths fit into one-half, okay? So that's our final answer, four, right there. It just started to rain. Hopefully you can still hear me. Um, let's do the next problem. Two-thirds divided by one-ninth. Well, again, we would multiply by the reciprocal, so I'm going to multiply by the opposite or the, the flipped version of one-ninth, which is nine over one. Okay, let me do that problem right down here. Now we have two-thirds times nine over one, which we'd multiply across. Two times nine is eighteen. And 3 times 1 is 3, which we can just divide. This is just a division problem. 18 divided by 3, which if you know your multiplication tables, 3 times 6 equals 18. So our answer is 6. Now I can count that. We're going to see how many times 1 ninth, this fraction right here, fits into 2 thirds. Okay, so with our bar model, this is our, our whole right there. But I can count to see how many times one ninth fits into this two thirds right here. It's a better picture in your book, but I can count one, two, three, four, five, six. So one, two, three, four, five, six times. Okay? That's basically what we're doing. We're trying to see how many times our our fraction goes into our other fraction. Okay? Just like a regular division problem, right? Okay. What I'd like you to do is pause the video and try to see if you can check this last one on your own.
Okay, hopefully you did the last problem. That last problem is four fifths divided by one tenth, which is the same as page 19 inside your book. So make sure you're checking on page 19 in your prime book. Um, okay, page 19. Um, four fifths divided by one tenth is the same thing as four fifths times. 10 over 1. In other words, we're multiplying 4 fifths times 10. Well, 4 times 10 is 40, and 5 times 1 is 5. Okay, so we can divide 40 divided by 5, which equals 8. That should be your answer. Now, why is it 8? Well, we're trying to see how many times 1 tenth goes into 4 fifths. So this right here is our 4 fifths. Let me actually draw it again. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, you have tenths. We're trying to see how many of these tenths fit into 4 fifths, which is all of that, right? Now 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, well, 8, eight tenths is the same thing as 4 fifths. So how many times does it fit in? Well, let's count it. Let's count to see how many times. Just check our answer. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 times, right? This doesn't count because that was, that's the other fifth that we're not using. So 8 is correct. All right, so that's the end of today's lesson. What I'm going to do is just show you a couple of games that you can play. Um, just making sure that you understand with those problems, you are counting the number of units in each part whole of our model. Okay, so when you're dividing a fraction by a fraction, you are finding out the number of units of the fractional div divisor in the fractional dividend, just like a regular division problem. Okay, all right, we're going to skip uh, page 19 and 20 for next time. What I'd like you to do is um, just check out these two links. We played a Kahoot in class, um, but we're not going to play that right now. Um, the Kahoot deals with dividing fractions by fractions, dividing fractions by whole numbers and dividing mixed numbers by whole numbers. So it is kind of complex, all right? What I do want to do, I want to show you this um, game right here. It's called mathplayground.com. Uh, it's dividing fractions. Remember, you can flip the second fraction. So that would be eight halves. One times eight is eight. And two times six is 12, which we can simplify. If I divide eight by four, I would get two. And divide 12 by 4, and that would I would get uh, 3. So I think 2 thirds is my simplified fraction. Let's check. Oh, I got it correct. All right, good. So check out this game right here. You can play that to practice division of fractions. And hopefully next time we will play this Kahoot. So thank you very much, boys and girls. We will talk to you later.